fueled by a concern over institutional racism, failing public schools, gentrification, and what they feel are discriminatory police practices, Boston Communities United, a group of United residents, were demanding that all mayoral candidates sign their 10 Demandments created by the group to address the needs to alleviate the suffering within the communities of color. Here to tell us about the mission and the origins of Boston United Communities, we've invited Taylor Key. She's a 24-year-old civic-minded individual who is pushing young people to be involved in civic change. Also with us this morning, Barry Lawton, a member of Boston Communities United. Welcome to both of you. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having Barry, us. let me start with you. Just uh, f talk to me about uh, the reasons for uh, coming together like this. How did this all come about and who started it? Well, uh, it was a, a, a group of uh, organizations uh, that came together that had similar concerns about uh, the resources of the city being distributed in a proper manner, um, being heard, um, looking at mitigating uh, issues as far as education is concerned, how we approach crime, the fairness and the equity within the police department, school department, fire department, um, all of these things. We think there needs to be a greater accountability and we want to um, unmask the perception that things are going great for us uh, and look at some of the realities. Okay, now Taylor Key, uh, this is a diverse group of people who are working together, is it not? Yes, it is. Okay, all right. And what what about some what about some of the the, the demandments? Um, maybe both of you could talk about that a little bit. What are some of the demandments? Okay, so a demandment that sticks out to me specifically is one that talks about us having people in the school that reflect the students, people in the school that are actually about the bettering the education for our students. As you know, a lot of kids nowadays they're not really receptive to the things that students back years ago were receptive to. So we just want to make it a point that people are really trying to reach the children. It kind of seems like the system is, the system is set up for us to fail. You're talking about principals, teachers, uh, people who work in the school system? Um... I would say the system in general. Okay. In general, all across the board. There are a lot of things that need to evolve that have not. And it's really affecting our community. And what people don't realize is that we spend most of our time in school. Students see the teachers sometimes more than they see their parents. So if we have teachers that are in that are in the school system that aren't really focused on what the needs are of the children, then it's kind of a setup. And uh, Barry, again, what about some of the other demands? Well, so, you know, just to uh, tail on to what she said, um, one of the demands is calling for uh, um, a percentage, 22 percent of the Boston public school teachers. Um, what we've seen is uh, a decline in. Um, um, people of color uh, teaching and administering in the schools. Um, but you know, when you look at it, um, Boston police, uh, the school system, uh, the fire department, many of these people don't live in Boston. So when you talk about things like community policing, um, at, there was a time that community policing meant that the police actually lived in the community. Uh, we believe that it's important um, that they um, not bypass the uh, the uh, military or veteran preference, but this is a civilian government which requires a civilian uh, uh, police force. So we are looking to uh, mitigate some of those things. And actions taken now, for example, uh, the first um, uh, three classes of this administration in the police academy did not represent diversity. Now certainly at the State of the City address, they highlighted uh, a new class that was much more diverse. One of my former students was in that, but if you look in terms of civil Civil service, um, that's three steps forward and uh, three steps backward and one step forward. We need to have diversity every year and progress being made every year. What, what's, uh, what kind of reaction or response have you gotten uh, from the uh, candidates you've asked to sign off on this? Well, you know, a lot of them are running and hiding because they don't want to be definitive about this issue. So we, uh, last weekend, we dropped over 7,000 households to take the message directly to the people. Uh, we have, we are very active on social media to let people know what's going did, did, on. Did the mayor, did either mayor or Tito Jackson, either one of them sign off on uh, We're not aware of them signing on with this, but we, this organization, which started really at the beginning of the fall, um, is, is geared towards going toward the future, not for this particular election, we certainly would like uh, turnout to be much greater. And uh, I guess how has this sort of resonated with youth, young people? How have they, um, are they responding at all? Um, 
I definitely don't think that a lot of youth are even aware of this organization and that's why I found that it was so important for me to join and for me to speak out because really what the Ten Commandments are asking for is fairness and equality. These are things that should be done without anyone having to ask, but they haven't been done. Or if there are policies put in place, they're not being implemented. And really, the youth, we're the ones that were going to be affected what, long term. What, what made you uh, feel compelled to get involved in this? I have a four-year-old, and right now, I, I'm, I work in a school system, and I see that there is a big gap. There's a big gap, and there's a need for someone that literally, legitimately cares, and there, that's lacking. And uh, I guess Barry, talk to me about I guess some of the the, the goals, short term, long term, term goals in this. Well, record. the long term goal uh, is is to educate because we believe when we educate people and the voters about the issues that they're going to be involved. As it stands right now, only one in ten voters, registered voters, comes out and participates in the election. So while some might claim that they have overwhelming support, uh, there's really evidence that there's an un uh, uninformed and uninspired uh, electorate. Some of the uh, next steps, uh, what happens after the mail well, mayoral we, we, election? We, we are going to continue to uh, take our case to the politicians. We are looking to change the ways of thinking, like the renaming of Fanduel Hall, um, to, to represent what Crispus Addicts, who died uh, uh, steps away, could look due north and, and see that uh, building of, of of a uh, racist institution, and t to this very day, and we can stand in that very same spot and look to, at that very same up, building. Why do you say that Faneuil Hall was a representative? Well, Faneuil Hall was a place of commerce, uh, and, and it was financed by slavery and the okay. slave trade, All right. um, and okay. I, I think it should reflect the, the real history. Okay, and we'll wrap it up right there. We're out of time. Uh, Barry Lawton, Taylor Key, thank you both for coming in, and uh, you know, good luck with your project. Here. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. That's it for this edition of Urban Update. I'm Byron Barnett. For all of us, here at Urban Update. Have a great Sunday, everyone.